Hi, everybody. So good to see you. My name is Mary J. Melendez. I probably have one of the best jobs at General Mills. Every day, I get to come to work to help make the world a little bit better. So I oversee a department that invests $100 million a year to help alleviate hunger, to improve sustainable agriculture, and to invest where our employees are living and working and where they're volunteering. So that's what I do in my day job. I'm super excited to be here tonight to introduce to you um, a really, really incredible young woman. I've heard so many brilliant ideas just in the short time I've been here. I'm super excited and really honored to be here with all of you. I'm really honored to be here with uh, Katie Stagliano, who is the founder and chief executive gardener of Katie's Crops. Um, so can we roll the video? Tagliano from Katie's Crops, and today we're at my flagship garden at Pinewood Preparatory School in Somerville, South Carolina. Katie's Crops is my not-for-profit organization, and the mission of Katie's Crops is to start vegetable gardens and donate the produce to those in need, as well as assist and inspire others to do the same. I was inspired to start Katie's Crops when I was in the third grade. I brought home a tiny cabbage seedling and that actually ended up growing into a 40 pound cabbage. I was able to serve my cabbage to 275 guests and that one day really changed my life. Until I went to the soup kitchen, I never really realized how big of an issue hunger is and how it affects so many people. I thought if one cabbage can feed 275 people, then imagine how many people an entire garden can feed. So when I first began Katie's Crops, my very first garden was in my backyard and the second Katie's Crops Garden is my flagship garden at Pinewood Preparatory School. And then after that, kids from across the country began to reach out. And so I began offering grants to kids across the United States so that they could become Katie's Crops growers and start gardens in their community where the produce would be donated to feed those in need. As adults, we kind of think, oh, that's just too big to take on. or oh, how are we gonna find the money for that? She doesn't see obstacles, Katie sees possibilities. Katie's Crops currently has 100 vegetable gardens growing in 31 states across the United States. We have a family of Katie's Crops growers that are working to end hunger in their communities. And this year we've donated 40,000 pounds of fresh produce to those in need across the country. Hi Katie, my name is Jeff Harmoning and I'm the chairman and CEO of General Mills. I couldn't be more thrilled to announce that you are the grand prize winner of the General Mills Feeding Better Future Scholars Program. And I want to congratulate Katie and Katie's Crops for this amazing program that she has built and congratulate you on being our Feeding Better Future Scholars winner. So thank you very much. Let's give Katie a round of applause for what she has done over the last 10 years. Just incredible. So Katie, you were nine years old when you founded Katie's Crops. That is a young age for such a big dream. Where did that come from? So when I was in the third grade, my school did something called the Bonnie Plants Third Grade Cabbage Program. And I got a tiny cabbage seedling and my teacher told me to bring it home and plant it in my backyard and see what I could grow. So I did just that, and my tiny cabbage ended up growing into a 40-pound cabbage. And I had absolutely no idea what to do with a 40-pound cabbage. I was like, this is far too much for my family. And every night before I sat down to dinner, my dad would always tell me how lucky my brother and I were because there were some families who were less fortunate than us and relied on soup kitchens for what might be their only meal of the day or went to bed hungry. So I thought, this cabbage is far too big for my family and I. I should donate it to help feed those in need. So my mom called around and we found the perfect home for my cabbage. It was a soup kitchen about 45 minutes from my house. And I donated my cabbage to Tri-County Family Ministries where I actually was able to serve it to 275 guests at the soup kitchen. Oh my God. And that one day really changed my life because I got to see all the faces of hunger and the people who relied on soup kitchens. And there were families just like mine who had fallen down on hard times. Mm -hmm. And I knew after seeing that one cabbage helped to feed 275 people, that I needed to do more to help, and I wanted to do more to help. And that was what inspired me to start Katie's Crops. It's just incredible. You know, hunger on our planet is such a big issue. 
Today, more than 800 million people don't know where their next meal is coming from, including 13 youth right in our own country. So how does it feel that you're actually helping to move the needle and that you're providing nourishment to people every day through Katie's Crops all across the country? It's such an amazing feeling. Giving back is the most incredible feeling. And it's truly amazing. I've built a family of all the people that I help with Katie's Crops and that come to the dinners that we help to feed, that we donate vegetables to. And so they're just the most incredible people and I wanna do everything that I can to help them and help them through this. So awesome. So you were just very recently named the winner of the General Mills Feeding Better Futures Scholarship Program. Tell me what that, what did that feel like? Were you surprised? Were you excited? It was. <laughs> It was amazing. Never in a million years did I ever think that this would happen to me. And it's so amazing that General Mills, such a big company, believes in me and my dream and that we share a dream of ending hunger and believe that like working together that we can make an impact. So it's amazing to have their support and just to think of all the possibilities with $50,000, how that will really change the face of Katie's crops and help us make me and all the growers across the country make an even bigger dent in the fight against hunger. Absolutely, so much good is gonna come from that. So tell us a little bit about how you moved this, the seed of an idea, this garden from your backyard and transform this into this organization that has gardens now all across the country. It's just, it's incredible and it kind of, it, you know, that journey from your backyard to across the country, it's, it would be helpful to hear a little bit how you did that. So I started with the first garden in my backyard after going to the soup kitchen because I realized that I wanted to do more to help. And then after that, I approached my school and I told them about what I was doing and I asked them if I could start a garden at my school and donate the produce to feed those in need. And I was only in the fourth grade at this time and my school gave me a plot of land the size of a football field. They were incredible and they were like, do whatever you want with this land grow as much vegetables as you want. So I started with the garden at my school, and then after that, kids across the country started reaching out and saying, we want to support you, we are very passionate about ending hunger, and we want to join you. And so I decided that I wanted to help these kids and give them grants so that they could join me in the fight against hunger. And so I began giving grants out to youth across the country, and that's how I started the Katie's Crops Gardens in other states, and it kind of just snowballed from there. There were so many amazing people in my community, my friends, my family, that really supported me. I never once said, Katie, this is maybe too big. Like, do you really think you can do this? They were always behind me and supporting me, and I wouldn't be where I am today without all of their help. That's just incredible. So you are sitting in a room full of bright minds that have all kinds of ideas about how to make a difference in the world. And if they have an inkling within them today or something that's tugging at their heart where they want to make a difference, what would you say to them? What advice would you provide? My advice would be to follow your heart. If you have a cause that you're passionate about or something that you want to do to make a difference in your community, I say go for it. It doesn't matter how small or how large your efforts are, you never know the difference that you're making. You could change someone's life by just one small action. So never let anyone tell you that you can't do something or that, oh, you might be a little too young to do that. Young people are amazing and we can do amazing things. And I think our generation is so great because we support each other. We're not afraid to follow our dreams. And I think that if there's something that you believe in, you should go for it. You never know what could happen. Katie, thanks so much for sharing your story. Your passion, your energy, your enthusiasm is just, it's contagious. And I'm so grateful that there are young leaders and innovators like you who are making a difference and who are helping to feed and nourish tomorrow. And with that, I would love to hear from some of the young leaders in the room. We already have a hand up. Can we take this first question right here? From Cody. Orleans and <laughs> Hi Cody from New Orleans. Welcome. Giving back. I love it. Um I would I have a question. Um would you like to start a kitty crops in New Orleans? Cuz I would sure. love to. I love it. Yes. I would Yay. love it. <laughs> uh I say cuz I'm sure none of I mean uh, any of us New Orleans or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> uh we wouldn't mind volunteering to work to give back to the community. Could you repeat that? I like. Oh, I said. Um, I said. I'm sure any any one of us people from New Orleans wouldn't mind working or volunteering for Katie Crops to give back to the community. That would be amazing. Oh my gosh, you're amazing. No, I would love that. There you go, another crop. <laughs> oh, get a couple of questions there. Yeah. Yep. My name is Majela and I'm also from New Orleans. So how can we set that up? Because that was going to be my question as well. And I'm very serious about it. So we go. do our grant cycles in the fall for like 
to become a Katie's Crops grower, but I can definitely, I'll give you all of my information so you can get in contact. But we have all of our information and our grant application on our website, which is katiescrops.com, and Katie and Crops both start with a K. And so you can find out all the information on there on how to apply to become a grower and the application and everything like that. Thank you. We have another question right here. Hi, um, my name is Wilfred and I'm from New Orleans. <laughs> <laughs> no Orleans in the house tonight. Um, <laughs> my question is, when you said that you wanted to start this organization when you were in third grade, um, do you, you told your parents, did they think that this was crazy or uh, did they have any ideas of it being foolish that you couldn't do it? Did they have any doubts? So my mom is right back there and she is the most amazing. <laughs> She is my biggest cheerleader, and never once did she ever tell me, Katie, I don't think you can do this. You're only nine years old. Do you really think that you can accomplish all of this? She was always supporting me and trying to help things make me realize my dreams. She was just so amazing, and I know I couldn't do any of this without her. So, no, without a doubt, she never once said, oh, Katie, I don't know if you can do that. She was always the first one to support me in everything that I wanted to do, and I definitely wouldn't be here without her. Great. Question right there. Um, my name is Sabria, and I'm from Philadelphia. I just wanted to know, well, great job. Like, that sounds Thank amazing you. what you're doing. <laughs> but, um, like, in the years to come, do you think about, like, expanding your businesses? Like, um, I heard a couple people from New Orleans ask you, are you, um, did you want to, like, go to other places? Are you planning on, like, um, putting more in, like, other cities? Or, like, what do you, what's next, like, for you? So we are in 30 states right now, and I really want to be in all 50 states. That's my big goal. So to be in all 50 states is what I'm working towards first. And I would love to have a Katie's Crops Garden in all the major cities across the United States. That would be amazing. But we're working towards all 50 states right now. So if y'all want to become Katie's Crops Growers, that would be awesome. <laughs> I thought we had some other hands up. Right here in the white t-shirt. Uh, hi, I'm August from Grand Junction again. Um, so, <clears throat> where do you get your grant money? Like, how, how, like, what organizations? I'm assuming you don't give the money out of your own pockets. Um, so, like, how do you how do you find the money to give those grants to people? So we search for a lot of youth grants because what's amazing as youth making a difference, there's so many people that want to help and support you. And there's a lot of amazing youth-based grant sites. There's Youth Service America and Volunteer Nation, just to name two of them. And these places actually let you know about grants that are specifically for youth. And those, they have been great supporters when I was first getting started. And we just seek out grants for your specific cause, there's also probably grants, like for instance, for us, there's been grants, hunger-related grants and things like that. So it's been a lot of searching online and finding websites like YSA and Volunteer Nation just that cater to us. And you can also, uh, this fall, go to the Feeding Better Futures website where we'll open the program for the second year. And uh, you can apply to be a scholar just like Katie. Yes, right there. What part does education about um, safe agricultural, uh, how are you going about teaching your partners how to safely engage with agriculture? Because in some inner city areas, there will be heavy metal poisoning. In some areas like Aspen, there is lead in our ground because of the, our history of mining. Um, what part does education in safe practices and safe testing of the ground play in your project? So we are all organic. We don't use any pesticides or anything like that with all of our gardens. And then we also have master gardeners and people that are mentors for all of our growers. So if they did have any questions about safe agriculture in their communities, they could definitely reach out to them. I'm not aware of all different, because we're in 30 different states, so I'm not aware of all the issues there. But we do encourage our growers to reach out if they do have any questions or concerns about things like that and reach out to our master gardener and all of our supporters to kind of help figure that out. But in specific cases, I'm not 100% sure how each gardener takes care of it, but we do offer the educational component and master gardeners and people there to answer questions and help support all of our growers. Well, with that, I just want to say thank you so much for the great questions. Thanks for the dialogue. Katie, congratulations on your thank Feeding you. Better Futures Award. We're so lucky to have you, and thanks for everything you've done.